<laughs> All right, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Gray Area Podcast with the one and only me, Jason, where we talk about things and situations that are rarely talked about for whatever reason. It's that simple. Now, as you guys know, this is a podcast that I started to basically focus on areas where um focus on areas where thing where we don't discuss and we don't talk about things you know, like gray area subject, basically. And it's that simple. And for you guys that are here right now, share the link. For you guys watching on YouTube, you can share the link as well. And hi to everybody, 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 everybody uh, that the videos reach out to, that the videos touch, and that the videos come into contact with. Uh, I'm right here on the end. <laughs> so, guys. Like I said, I'd like to welcome you guys to the Great Area Podcast, where we talk about situation and things that I rarely talk about. Now, today, 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 we are talking about emotional and psychological trauma. The Great Area, folks. Now, uh, we focus on childhood trauma, and we had a discussion on sexual trauma. So, this is basically to wrap it all up not to say wrap it all up, but to basically focus on what's happening now. It's like what's going on now with us. So I'd like to welcome you guys again to my YouTube friends and to all my Facebook friends that this video will need and that this video will touch and that this video will show up on your wall, wherever. We have a lot of conversations, even on WhatsApp, whereas we talk about these things and we talk about, you know, how the topics affect them and so what. And so I'd like to welcome everybody to the Great Area Podcast. Share, 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 share. If you're here watching the live feed, if you're watching it on YouTube, you can just click that share button. If you're watching it on Facebook, just share it with your friends. Now, emotional and psychological trauma. I don't know about y'all, but some of us are really, really, really going through some hard times. Some of us are really, 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 really struggling. Some of us got depression. Some of us have anxiety. Some of us have legit fears. Some of us have, some of us are going through situations where we feel like we're all alone. Some of us feel like, you know, it's the end of the world. And people always ask questions like, oh, it ain't or say things rather like it ain't that serious and that for me is a pet peeve because how do you know what anybody is feeling it might not be serious to you but shucks it's affecting the person or the individual like a lot of people go through emotional and psychological battles every day they wake up a lot of people go through these things a lot of people are fighting with things mentally emotionally I don't even want to get into the physical, but I just want to stick right here into the gray area of emotional and psychological trauma. And some people believe that trauma can just exist like, from something that happened in the past. Well, that's not the case. So we're going to dive into this one, guys, and we're going to talk about this one. And like I said, shout out to all of my YouTube friends that are watching the video. I shout out to the few Facebook people that are watching the video and shout out to everybody that watches the video after it has been uh, recorded live. I would like to thank you guys and thank you guys for the equipment drive funding. Some of you supported me with the equipment that is on the way so that we can give you a better quality. A lot of people saying uh, they don't mind the quality, but y'all know if we do something, we got to do it right. Now let's dive into this emotional and psychological trauma. Woo. A lot of people like to ask, so what do you call emotional and psychological trauma? Well, emotional and psychological trauma is the result of extraordinarily or stressful events that shatter your sense of security, making you feel helpless in a dangerous world. Psychological trauma can leave you struggling with upsetting emotions, memories, and anxiety that won't or doesn't seem to go away. It can also leave you feeling numb, disconnected, and unable to trust people. Mm. 
I don't know, but y'all, but I've been there. I've been there, whereas I feel like I can't trust nobody. And it's a constant emotional battle that we go through daily, 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 daily. It isn't something, it isn't an area where we want to be in, but because of situations and circumstances that are, that happen or are happening, it puts us in this mind frame and this mental frame where it's just emotional. I mean, we, we battle it. Now, traumatic experience often involves sometimes a threat of life or safety, but some situations can be simple or minute that causes us to have these traumatic reactions. Some situations leave us feeling overwhelmed and isolated, and that can result in trauma, even if it doesn't involve physical harm. Now, keep in mind, uh, a lot of people uh, went through some traumatic experience, and it doesn't have to be physical. It can simply be emotional. Somebody broke your heart. Somebody took you for granted. Somebody used you. You're talking to somebody and they don't understand like where you're coming from. They don't understand like what you're going through or they don't understand your feelings that you're trying to express. Like if you call them and say, hey, I want to kill myself. What you want to kill yourself for? Like they don't understand what you're going through. And a traumatic experience is not the objective circumstance that determine whether an event is traumatic, but just subjective emotional experience of the event or reoccurring event or something that is happening now. The more frightened and helpless you feel, the more likely you are to be traumatized. Some things that we go through or some things that we face, we end up feeling Helpless, hopeless, rejected, neglected, everything you could feel. And you wonder, hey, why am I feeling this way? Why am I going through this? What's the reason? What's the reason behind all of this? Why nobody can seem to understand what I'm going through mentally, emotionally, psychologically? Like, why, why, why? And it's a constant thing that we have to face daily. And it seems like things aren't getting better. Like, there is no hope. When you wake up, you wake up, you see the same situations presenting itself. Uh, you feel like there's no change. You feel like your life is going in a downward spiral instead of going up. You feel like nobody is there for you. If you talk to people, you feel like you don't understand. That leads to emotional and psychological trauma. And we are faced with these situations and things every day. Every day. Some people might be like, oh, why are they acting that way? Or why are they so mean? Or why are they always angry? Or why, 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 why are they doing these things? Why? Emotional and psychological trauma. That's, that, that causes a chain reaction for us or for an individual that is going through, they act out, they are showing signs, and sometimes these signs are actually a cry out for help. Like you notice a person used to be so jubilant and bubbly, then all of a sudden now they're angry, they always snapping, they always ready to flip in, or uh, they ready to knock you out, they ready to burst a Guinness ball across your head, they ready to burst a Heineken ball across your head. Emotional and psychological trauma. And it's sad that we don't even talk about this when a lot of people, even here in the Bahamas, a lot of people are actually going through these things on a daily basis, whereas they are crying out for help. And we don't notice the signs, and we don't even notice, hey, um, this person needs help or needs somebody. We just look at them and be like, oh, they're acting, oh, they're crazy, man. They, they just stupid. They don't make no sense. Or even if you try to explain, hey, this is how I feel. Oh, that don't make no sense. Oh, you tripping over for that? Like, how could you tell somebody how to respond to something that is psychologically and emotionally affecting them? 
We have to learn to be more supportive of people, people's emotion and understand their point of view and where they are coming from. It's not that they want to be that person. It's not that, hey, they, it's not that, hey, they want to act a certain way. Sometimes people just express themselves or express the emotions in a certain way, whereas they're actually showing you, hey, I need help. I do. And oftentimes we see people act in a certain way and we don't, we don't try to dissect or we don't try to understand like, hey, why or what is this person going through that is making them act out this way? We just sum up a conclusion and that's, we just cast them in a light to say, hey, this person had any no good. They crazy. When are we going to get to that point where we are offering assistance to people that actually need real help? An emotional and psychological traumatic effect can cause a person to do things that even themselves don't even think or ever thought that they would do. Sometimes it could even lead to them causing physical harm to themselves. Can you imagine going through something so emotionally traumatic whereas you feel and you, you just have this feeling inside of you that, hey, nobody understands Nobody understands what I'm going through. And th the, only, the only thing that you can actually think of, the only thing you can think of is say, well, since nobody understanding me or nobody understanding what I'm going through or, or hey, nobody can seem to relate to my situation, then I need a way out. And in case you guys didn't know, there are actually three types of trauma. You have the acute trauma, we have the chronic trauma, and we have the complex trauma. And the acute trauma is actually results from like a single event that happened to you. It could be like an accident, uh, some form of act of violence or cruelty, or like a natural disaster, whereas a hurricane, or it could be like a loved one passing, passing away or it could be physical or sexual assault. And then you have chronic trauma. Chronic trauma is something that I can relate to. Chronic trauma is repeated and prolonged. You know, it's like, it's like a buildup, a buildup of so much things that happen in throughout your life. It just keep on piling and going up and going up and going up and going up and just stacking themselves up. Like every day you wake up or something else. The day you wake up, your tire flat. You fix your tire, boom. Your hair gasket blows. You fix your hair gasket, boom. Something else happens. You go to work thinking you, you'll be okay, boom. Your job stressed me. Your coworkers are acting crazy. Your manager freaking themselves out. Then, boom, you go home thinking you could find a peace, of mind, a peace of mind in the one and only place you call solitude. Then, boom. It's repeated and prolonged. That, that, that I can relate to. And then we have the complex trauma. It's ex when you're exposed to uh, various and multiple traumatic events, often of an invasive or interpersonal nature. It's like a long-term abuse, long-term child physical abuse, and stuff like that. It just happens. But mm, I want to focus on the, 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 chronic trauma because the average Bahamian goes to chronic trauma. It's like a repeated and prolonged situation that's happening over and over and over and over and over. And we just go into, go into, go into, go into, go into. And, 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 and you know, people that go through emotional and psychological trauma, we as individuals have to reach a sense of security within ourselves that we need to speak out because we, we are going through situations that we go into things where we keep holding these things in for years and years and years. Like we just hold it in and we, we just hold something happened to us. We just take that and sweep that under the rug. Just boom, we move on. 
Then after that, something else happened. We, just, we don't address it right away. Or we don't talk about it. We just sweep that under the rug. Boom. Then something else happened. We just keep piling and piling and piling. We have to reach a sense of security within ourselves. I'm not saying that, you know, to trust anybody with your personal business or whatever. I'm just saying it has to be a point where as we have to act or at least tell somebody to, hey, to reach out to us. So, guys, like I said, this is the Gray Area Podcast, where as we talk about situations and things that are rarely talked about for whatever reason. If you're here for my YouTube page, just share, 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 share it with your friends, share it with your family. If you are here on Facebook, you can share it as well. And for those of you that are going to see the video after the live recording, you can share it as well. So, hello, 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 all, hello, all. Okay, comment from Shelly. Hi, Shelly my good friend. And she said, yep, an easy way out. Because sometimes people go into things and the only thing that they can fathom or think about is actually suicide. And you wonder why. It's just because they feel as though no one is understanding like what they're going through or what they've been through or, 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 or could even come to a point to where they can relate. You, have you ever been in a situation where you're so emotionally unbalanced? I mean, like you a mess, and you actually try to reach out to somebody, and they and they just shut you down. Like, okay, it ain't that serious. Like, you 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 crying out for help, and you explaining yourself, pouring out yourself to a person, and you just telling them, hey, um, this is the situation. I don't feel good. I'm not happy. It's just so much going on. And they'd be like, okay, for what? Like, they, they, they don't even want to understand or to try to relate or to try to give you some sort of advice to say, hey, you know, let's try to take some necessary steps to where you can just build and you can just, you know, build yourself back up emotionally and psychologically whereas you can deal with these stuff or you're not alone I'm here for you some people shut you right down and they just add to your emotional and psychological stress like can you imagine just going to somebody that you thought was supposed to be there for you and you thought that hey this person's supposed to have your back and then you you crying out to them and you just explaining to them hey this and that this is how I feel and they just tell you say it ain't that serious that, that's what you worry about, you know, what that does to you emotionally and psychologically. Denisha from Facebook says, people can't read in mind. That's a good point. You got to be strong and come out and say, I need help. That's so true. And I think it's because we, we as human beings, we are at that point to where, because, you know, keep in mind now, one of the side effects of our, uh, emotional and psychological trauma, whether it's reoccurring or something that happened, we actually build up a wall and we build that so high and we build that so tall to where we don't let nobody in. I mean, we want help, you know, but we don't want to ask for it because, you know, the wall, we have a wall and then we have trust issues. It's just like we are, we are, we are a bit hesitant to actually go out there for help because we are afraid, hey, what is this person going to say? Like, if I tell somebody, hey, I'm so stressed right now, like, I literally want to shoot somebody, you know what I mean? You know, some people look at you like, what the hell is this dude on? Like, what, what's this problem? They wouldn't even understand. They wouldn't even try to relate. I'm not saying that you should go out there shooting people. No, I'm just saying. I think, I think you're right that people can't read mine. But sometimes the person that is going through the emotional and psychological experience I just feel like sometimes they're just not at that place to where as they can just come out blatantly and say, hey, I need help. You should, you should, like I said earlier, you should actually build a, a, a security within yourself to where as you want to ask for help. But sometimes it's, it, it's not easy asking for help. Some people deal with emotional and psychological trauma daily. It's like a daily battle. It's like a daily, 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 daily battle. And they, they, they're not at a place to where they want, they want to just release that to anybody. I mean, sometimes you can find situations where uh, somebody asks, hey, I noticed that, you know, you, you haven't been looking like yourself. 
Is everything okay? Sometimes they can find that as an avenue to, you know, express themselves. But the majority of people that deals with emotional and psychological trauma has been proven. They don't just talk about it. Sometimes they'll be going through situations for years and years and years, and they'll never, they'll never, ever, ever discuss it. Never discuss it for whatever reason. Whatever reason they go to or they're going to, they'll never, ever tell anybody. Like, I know people personally that deals with crap every day. They, it's like every day they go into a store, and I'm like, hey, that was me. I don't know how I'll be surviving. And, you know, they don't, they don't talk about it. They, for whatever, they don't talk about it. Benedict says, people needing help hesitate because of what others think. We sometimes are not supported. Facts. It's real facts. We ain't. If we just going to sit here and pretend like, hey, if I go right now and express my problems to somebody, sometimes you expressing your problems to somebody, they'd be like, well, what you want me to do? And I've seen instances where people just shut, when I mean shut you down, like they shut you down. Like you, you, will, you will just be opening up to that person and boom, black. It's just like you see him black because you can't believe that you actually went to that point to open up yourself to an individual and they just shut you down. And it's crazy. Anisha said, also, they don't want to be judged. They don't want their business to spread. There's a lot of stuff so, so true. And that's another great point. That's another great point. Can you imagine telling somebody, hey, telling somebody, man, for example, let me use this. Let me use this because this, this is a part of the topic tomorrow. Hypothetically speaking, can you imagine me going to a situation, right? Whereas I'm feeling so depressed because uh, I have an STD or something like I have H I'm HIV positive. Let's say I have this, I am HIV positive. And that is weighing down on me so heavily. You know, it has me feeling some, it has me feeling some type of way. Whereas, whereas I'm so emotionally, psychologically, and I'm stressed, depression, anxiety, and I'm feeling like I have no self-worth, no value. Can you imagine me saying, hey, going to somebody, and I, I just want to get that out, and I say, hey, you know, I really going through something. I just found out I have HIV. Can you imagine, like, you, have, you tell somebody that now, they'll treat you like you have some type of con contagious disease. They'll judge you just, they'll judge you based on your circumstances even if it cannot or will not affect them. And, and that, that for me is crazy because sometimes you want to talk about situations and sometimes you want to talk about things. But hey, who, if you talk to somebody and then they, they're so judgmental, why would you want to open up? Why? And Shelly from YouTube says, okay, Sometimes the fear of being judged. She elaborated on the point of Denisha, which is so true. People deal with their emotions and they go into so much depression and so much pain and so much anxiety and so much, so much, so much. Oh, this is a good point from O'Neill from Facebook. Was the individual you chose to vent your frustration to equip to help to listen or help. Ah, I think this will bring in another point. Sometimes you need a therapist. I do recommend a therapist. I do. I always tell people, if you feel as though you're afraid of, of, of what someone is going to think, like someone that you know or someone that uh, you, somebody that you talk to on a daily basis, or basically somebody that is known to you. If you feel that they're going to judge you, I always say that a therapist or a counselor is the right way to go because, hey, you go do your sessions for like an hour or however long you take, and then you express yourself. Sometimes we just need to let it out, you know. We just, for some, I have to make that clear, for some, for some, we just have to get stuff off of our chest, for some. That's a way of venting. For some of us, we can talk to people and we feel so much better. It's like a heavy load has been lifted off our shoulders. And we, are, we, we just at that point to where we feel, we feel so much lighter that we can actually talk to somebody. And I do recommend a therapist. A lot of people, for whatever reason, they don't believe in therapists for whatever reason. But 
I do recommend a therapist because sometimes, like O'Neill said, the person you choose to vent your frustrations or problems or emotional or psychological stress to, sometimes they are not equipped to help. They don't have the mental capacity to aid you or to tell you or they don't even know what to speak into you or even how to respond to what you say for you to actually feel like you can actually face the situation. Sometimes talking to certain individuals can cause you to leave worse than you actually came to them. And that's pure fact. Sometimes the individual that you we choose to vent to, they aren't equipped to listen or help. And a lot of people say, oh, listening can't be so hard, but sometimes it is. A lot of people go through, I mean, a lot of people go through, a, go through chronic trauma. And again, I say chronic, the definition of chronic trauma is it's when something is repeated and prolonged. Like we going to, going to, going to, going to, you can't catch a break. You, it's like you, you, I don't know if, if you guys ever been in a predicament where I, where I you're going through so much. It's like you can't, it's like you're drowning. You're drowning. It's like every time you get up for breath, you just go back underwater. <laughs> every time you try to gasp for breath, you just go back underwater. <laughs> just taking it. You're just trying to stay above water. That's that 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 that's that's chronic chronic trauma. Boy, I like this. Anir from YouTube says lack of emotion and intelligence is why probably why folks judge. So true. Some people don't have the intellectual capacity to even understand what's going on. And I so like this point because I've seen a situation where I was right. Somebody spoke their truth, right? Somebody came forward and spoke their truth. Now the time frame that they took to spoke their truth was probably um, maybe 15 years or so. And I've seen people that ask dumb, uh, Dumb, stupid questions, asinine questions like, why did you take so long to speak your truth? Like, do you know what that person had to go to to emotionally drag themselves to speak that truth? Folks don't understand. Folks don't understand when you're going through situations. Sometimes the only, the only thing you can think of, right? The only thing you can think of is, look here, no one can help me. I got to deal with this myself. And when you finally build the courage, right, to actually speak up on whatever it is that you're going through, they say something asinine or moronic that doesn't even make sense. How can you put a time frame on somebody's emotional state? And we as people in a society, we, we have to stop doing that. It's like we, we want people to just have a microwave, a, 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 a microwave reaction to things. Some people go through things. Some people go through things day after day after day after day. And sometimes it takes them years to talk about it. And when they talk about it, oh, why are you just talking about it now? Like we have to be more sensitive and compassionate. Like, 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 like Prime Minister Minna says, where's your heart? Where's your compassion to these reactions? And then we wonder why people don't talk to nobody because, hey, we so judgmental and we lack the emotional intelligence. To, to sit down and listen to a conversation and then respond. We, and even when we, sometimes people respond to you, it's best that they didn't even say nothing. I would rather speak to somebody on my situation or my depression, anxiety, or whatever I'm going through mentally, and they don't say nothing at all than me telling somebody about my situation and they say something asinine. Hmm. 
And Bray said, small-minded people only listen to reply, but not to understand facts. It's like they just, they just, they just, they just want to say anything like they're, like they're Dr. Phil. And like O'Neill said, they lack the emotional intelligence. And it's so, it's so crazy, man. Ms. Palmer said, and that's why people don't come forward to speak out. True. A lot of people are hurting and a lot of people are going through emotional and psychological trauma that is chronic. It's prolonged and it's happening every day. They can't catch a break. Do they wish to speak about it? Yes. Will they speak about it? Most times, no. It's, 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 it's crazy how we as a society, not even society, we as human beings, we lack emotional intelligence to at least try to understand a person or try to just be there for a person based on what they're going through their emotional and, 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 and psychological balance that they're going through. Sometimes, if you don't have something sensible to say when somebody actually decides to open up to you, it's best you don't say anything at all. Shelly said, men were always told to be strong and to keep things in order. But we have to understand sometimes the pressure can become very tall. It has nothing to do with gender. Fuck. Straight facts. In this society, it's, 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 oh, you're the man. You have to be strong. You have to keep it together. When they don't know, sometimes we just want a way of escape too. Listen, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can speak with, for me. I know what it is to be so depressed to whereas I don't talk to nobody. Why? Because I know I'm so masculine and I'm the dormant species and look at all faces by myself. And listen, I'd be literally drowning. I've had I've had I've had days to where I was so depressed whereas I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. And you know, I just go about my daily business and you know and just dying inside. And it's like that because society has placed this thing on men to where we can't show any signs of weakness. And sometimes we want help, but we, 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 we don't want to ask because like, like the people have been saying, we are afraid to be judged. Oh, you a man, man, that's small things. Deal with that. Deal with that, bud. That's what you're worrying about. Benedict says, people turn to suicide after trying to talk but no one understands. Facts. And a lot of people don't talk about their situations, right? I'm a living testimony of that. I've been to a situation where I don't talk about stuff, right? But we have, we have to be to a point where as now we have to really pay attention, you know. If I say that you're my friend, right? I should be at a point to where I can observe to say, hey, something's a little different with you or something is a little off. Or my friend ain't acting the way they supposed to. Hey, my friend used to text me one time a day. Now it goes to half a time. My friend used to text me six times a week, but now it's going, it, it, it's down to once. Or I rarely hear about them at all. And sometimes when you reach out to these people, you see that their patterns have changed. You would be surprised to know what they're going through. I'm Bennett, I, I totally agree because I've had situations to where some of my friends wanted to commit suicide. And the one key thing that they always say, that they always say, no one understands. And it goes back to lacking the emotional intelligence, like O'Neill said. <laughs> Anybody say, are you human? Do you have a sword? See you, 
Our society judges the spouse for staying in. Oh, man. This one right here, this this tough. This this right here, this boy. Oh, this could dive right into one of my topics, but we, we could touch this. Our society judges the spouse for staying in an abusive relationship, and we should respond differently. Fuck. We should respond differently. How we should respond? I don't know, maybe just listening to their problems. I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't judge you if you choose to get your eyes blocked by your spouse because I don't know, I don't know what you're going through uh, emotionally and psychologically to the reason why you're still there. But as a friend, I would offer you little one or two advice or I would, you know, take you out to make sure, take your minds off of things. But to say me diving deep into your business, no, because as far as they're concerned, you can flip the script on me. You can tell me stay out of your business. But that that right there, mm, that's that's a real gray. Hi, Verlin. I would rather drown in my thoughts. Oh man, let me start again. I would rather drown in my thoughts because it would hurt more it would hurt more people take your problems more pe it would hurt more people take your problems for a joke. They would be like, it ain't that serious. Fox. I'm really you so right. And I don't know, I don't who are you? Who are you to estimate my situation? To estimate actually my situation. Like how could you fix your mouth to tell me that my situation or the way I'm feeling emotionally, psychologically, isn't that serious? Like, who are you? Who are you to tell me, if I lose a loved one, to tell me how to grieve? And, and it's common in our society today. People tell you how to grieve. People like to tell you, it ain't that serious. People like to tell you, man, that's a joke, man. You could get through that. All of these things are the norm that triggers a person into going crazy sometimes. You know, sometimes you go into situations and things and you actually open up your mouth to tell somebody and they say one of these things and you could just slap their heads right off of their bodies. We have to take the time to dissect and analyze the situation before we respond. Like, okay. They go into some situations. Let me see how I could just inch my way in there. Let me see if I could just, you know, let me see if I could just, you know, try to take them out or basically treat them to lunch. Or sometimes it just be these little things that we can do, you know, that can actually help a person go through whatever it is they're going through emotionally and psychologically. And that, and that that right there is a pet peeve for me, you know. That it ain't that serious, because I've had I've had people say that to me, and from listen, that's why I don't talk to nobody, you know. I'm one of those persons that don't talk, because that right there sets fire in me. It ain't that serious. How can you tell an individual that is going through something emotionally and psychologically that is not that serious? If it wasn't that serious, they wouldn't be feeling the effects of it. And keep in mind, right? Uh, emotional and psychological trauma can happen anywhere, anywhere. O'Neill says, the workplace can benefit from instituting on-site mental health break exercise. It would be a good investment. I agree. But would they? I think, I, I think if you ask me on, on that same note, I think it should be like a, every quarterly evaluation of so people bringing a professional to any workplace to see how a person is coping emotionally and, 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 and psychologically on the job, even in general. And then actually, you know, not to force the people in it, but just actually give you, like give you an alternative, hey, this is here, 
for anybody. Everything is going to be confidential and bomb. If you decide you want to talk to somebody, the offices are, the offices are open. I think that's a great idea. Have those exercises be voluntary, correct. Whereas if you feel like you need to some, nobody's going to force you. You're basically making your own choice. Listen, we don't, we don't understand how things can affect persons. And we don't understand how a simple thing, a simple thing can actually break down a person. And when I say break down a person, I mean break down emotionally, psychologically. Sometimes, People go through things, right? And we just add to it. And we don't stop for a second to understand, hey, what's, like, hey, man, my boy was just so good the other day, he gotta be going through something. And Verlin said, some people are not mentally strong. It takes a lot of strength to stay sane in this time. I totally agree. And I think too, in this modern time that we live in, right, it's actually getting harder. I don't know about y'all, but it's actually getting harder to hold a peace of mind. And this time that we live in now, right now, and I'm not talking about globally, you know, I'm talking right here in the Bahamas. And this time that we are living in now, it's getting very difficult to keep it together mentally, emotionally, psychologically. It's getting difficult. Like sometimes you look at things people do and you're like, what the? Like you can't believe that this person is actually doing. And some, some people do some stupid things. And it's getting so hard to keep it together. Barry said, yes, I'm certain that will be, yes, but I'm certain that will be used against employees and cause even more stress. It's only a good idea in theory, yes. In a sense, but I mean, I feel as if, if I feel if they do it in a way where it's, um, it's privately sourced, so to speak, you know, like not, not like privately sourced. In theory, it's a good idea, but if it's privately sourced, it, it, there's a possibility that it, 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 could, it could, could work. O'Neill says, sanity is a bit subjective. You have to define that. You may have to choose your circle wisely. Mm. Hmm. I mean, mm, well, about the circle part, right? I agree you have to choose your circle wisely, right? But even sometimes, right, even after you, let's say you, your circle was 40 people, right? And you narrow it down to three people, like they've shown you, hey, they're loyal or whatever, 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 right? And then some people just don't know how to respond. It's, I mean, they respond to other things that you tell them a certain way, but it's just one thing that, hey, they told you, fine. Then it's a different response. Hello, Chevette. Chevette says, some might want to be a part of the exercise, but, pri but too prideful to take part in it. Fair of being judged by other thoughts. <clears throat> and what's sticking out to me is, is, is the key word that the majority of people are saying. P 
being judged by others. That that that's sticking out to me. It's 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 so it's so common now. It's so common now. It's so common to where us. We are to a point where us we can't talk about our emotional state with persons or whatever or whoever because we feel like we're gonna be judged. That's like a common narrative for everybody. Like that's the sentiment of everybody. It's impossible if it's on site. Um, not really, you know, because you you are you are liable to lose if you are a professional uh, psychologist or a therapist or whatever, right? And then you break that confidentiality. You are you you are actually breaking the law, and you could actually lose your practice and your business and your name in general if if information is leaked. If information, if any sort of in information of a client is leaked, so I mean nobody's gonna know if 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 it was. When I, I'm not saying that they should be in the same building. You know, I'm saying that. Well, O'Neill actually brought up the point. If it's outsourced, right? Like if it's a private person, then that person can just go to that to whichever place the designated or chosen therapist or psychologist is there, then they will be able to provide assistance or somebody to talk to. And I mean, even if it's on site, let's say hypothetically speaking that it's on site, that person has more to lose if they submit to the powers that be for information. Nobody's gonna wanna lose, hey, you know? Nobody's one gonna wanna lose clients and private clients or whatever by giving out a person's information. And O'Neill says, a therapist has a license to protect. To divulge information without the client's permission is elite fact. It will result in their license lawsuit. Ray says, psychologically speaking, if that person hasn't sat in your shoes, they will never understand. Even then, they don't understand. Oh, that's deep. That one, that one, that one, that, that one is deep. That right there, that, that, that caught me off guard, Ray. That caught me off guard. Because Eve, can you imagine, right? that I went through a situation and you went through the same thing, right? You went, you already, uh, I'm going through a situation. Let me say I'm going through a situation and you went through it. And you talked to me, giving me advice to say, hey man, you know this and that, I've been through it. There's a possibility that I can tell you, you still don't understand what I'm going through because I, that, that right there, right? Nikki, oh Nikki, that right there, that caught me off guard. I, I've never even thought about that. But I could understand, I can relate to telling somebody, hey, you don't understand because you've never been through it. But even if somebody, even if somebody been through what you went through, a person can feel like they still don't understand. That's deep. That right there, Nikki, is deep. That's, that's deep. O'Neill said, you have to reach a point where you don't give up. Then being judged by others won't sting as much. Boy. This is not a deep one too, you know. I think we as human, I think we as human beings, the majority of us, and this is just my opinion, this is just my opinion. The majority of us as human beings, we seek or sought approval from others. Like we don't want to feel like we're in a zone all by ourselves. So I feel that's why, that's why we are at that point where we do give up of being judged because for whatever reason, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know why, because me personally, I'm at a point to where I don't give up. You know what I mean? But that's just me. But there are other people out there that they want help, but they seek approval from others. Basically, they care actually what they think. 
They care about how this person is going to see them after the after they open up. They care. I mean, I can't put a time limit on how long it took for me to reach to a point where I just don't care. But at the same time, I mean, that it, it's it, it's it's tricky. It's tricky because not everybody have that mental capacity to not care what others what others think. Because the majority or the masses actually, the majority of the people we we actually we actually we actually care. We actually care about hey how I'm gonna look if I tell this person or should I tell this person? That's just like example. Like me personally, I don't judge. I might not agree with your decision. And I'm going to make it known, hey, I don't support or I don't agree to this, but to condemn you or to chastise you based on your decision, no, I'm not going to do that because that's not me. That's not who I am. I'm not going to judge you. I might disagree, but I'm not going to judge you. It's like, for example, somebody you know, right? Let's say, okay, let's say a friend is pregnant by uh, a guy who's married, right? That 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 individual isn't going to, even if she wants to talk about it to somebody, she's going to have that fear of being judged. Oh, you have a child with a mild mind? You know, it's that stigma. Rather than being supportive to say, hey, uh, what are we going to do to make sure that you get through this pregnancy safe and sound without being stressed and so forth? You know, that's the norm for our society. Well, you, you get pregnant for a uh, mild mind? You know, me personally, I'm not going to chastise. that. If it's anything, I'm just going to help you get through the situation. But it's not our first response in a society. And it's sad, but it's, it's the truth. It's not our first response. It's not, it's not our go-to to, to automatically be supportive at first. No. Our society is based on judging. Oh, shuck, you're going to hell. That's what you do. Oh, you evil. Oh, you bad. That's that. That's our society for whatever reason. And these are things that triggers emotional and psychological trauma. Like we always, we always feel the need to judge somebody. What's good, KJ? Circles don't always work out. Fact. That's what I said. Because you can start off with a circle and then you could cut that circle down to actually four people. And then one of those buggers will surprise you. By doing an abnormal thing to where you, you, you can't believe this person was your friend all these years. And that right there, that'll set you off too. Mickey says, if someone can judge you by the shoes you wear or the car you drive, imagine how they will judge you for what you are going through. Boy, look here. Mm. That's true. It's so sad, but but it's true. Like folks will judge you for the simplest things. You wear a little, you wear a little cheap pants. Oh, he broke. <laughs> Your pants got a little tear. You think he can't change that? You can't think he can't change that pants? I agree, Nikki. I can't say I disagree with that. Judging in this society, in our country. It's poor. Like we, before we be supportive of the victim, we would actually victim shame them. I'm the victim and you're victim shaming me. I'm the one that's going to, it's like we find alternatives. We as a society in this Bahamian population, we find alternatives or whatever, whatever it is we find to throw out that person that is going through something. Denisha says, people handle things differently, and that person might be stronger than you. Fact. A lot of people handle um, emotional stress, whether it be depression, anxiety. We handle things different. Listen, a lot of us go through so much things on a daily basis where we actually struggling. 
We struggling to maintain our peace. Boy, listen. And that's why it's so it's 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 just it's just it's just hard to open up the people these days. It's just hard. O'Neill says, I think it's unhealthy to always want public appeal. Fact. It means you're living for the public and you will lose yourself in the process. I love this. And that's so true. And that's, and that's what's happening. That's why we as people, we are losing ourselves. We don't want to speak up and we don't want to talk about situations for whatever reason because we want the public appeal. And I don't know when, when we are going to get to that point where we break out of that, but it's a normal cycle. Like we are so afraid of what the public is going to think for what we are going through. We are afraid to talk about it, speak out. When you said, think before you act or react and be at peace with your decision. That helps a lot. Facts. Coming to that point to where, as you say, man, look here. This, this, this already happened. It's time to deal with it. Barry says, what I mean, what I mean is that it's impossible to hide folks. You will likely be looked at funny. This is uh, from bringing the, um, basically therapist or having a therapist to the job. What I mean is that it's impossible to hide folks. You will likely be looked at funny by your peeps just for talking to them for too long. The way your colleagues see you interacting with them, et cetera. As long as people can see, they will have opinions and talk about it together. I'm sure we all know that one coworker, oh man, oh man, you went there, that everyone thinks, thought at some point was sleeping with so and so. Sometimes that doesn't play out well, but ironically and sadly, that person is only so close to so and so because they see that everyone else likes to talk about people and there's nothing sexual going on at all sometimes. Fact. Man, you speak, you speak, fine, listen. You speak in fact. Sometimes people draw conclusions for whatever, what. Oh, boy, Barry, boy, Barry, boy, Barry. You open up a can of worms. <laughs> Let me get that last part again. I'm sure we all know that one coworker that everyone thinks or thought at some point was sleeping with so-and-so. Sometimes that doesn't play out well. But ironically and sadly, that person is only so-and-so, is only close to so-and-so because they see that everyone else likes to talk about people and there's nothing sexual going on at all sometimes. But again, when it's a person in a position of power over the individual, they often abuse that authority. Mm, 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 mm. You just open up a can of worms. It's, cra it's crazy. And that's another thing, you know. It's crazy how we draw a conclusion. We, we draw, a female, right, could have, a female could be catching ride, right? You know, I know. She could have 10 dudes, right, dropping a home. All of them could be, I, hypothetically speaking, could be a cousin. Now, the majority of individuals, she's a hoe. You see all the dudes be dropping a home? Like, we'll jump to conclusions and we'll come up with this, this strange narrative for whatever reason, right? Or oh, she's a hoe, she's bad, or what? All you play, all of them dealing with that play. You know what I mean? And we don't even know. They could be genuine relatives or whatever. Maybe one of them is her boyfriend, but we already came to that conclusion. I, listen, all of these things causes emotional and psychological trauma. Starting conclusions for whatever reason. And like I said, the one that we go through, we as individuals, chronic emotional and psychological trauma. That the average behavior deals with chronic and emotional and psychological trauma. That's when it's repeated and prolonged. K 
keep going through and going through and going through and going through and going through. Can't catch, can't catch, can't catch air, man. You can't breathe. Vernon says, I battle with depression every morning I get up. So I look for the positive and try to stay positive. <laughs> See what I mean? Chronic emotional and psychological trauma. Every morning. That's it. Sometimes it's very, very difficult, you know, for us as people to break out of depression. Sometimes depression can last a lifetime. Some people are depressed every day. And, it, and it's real. But we still can find, we still will find, we still will find whatever reason it is to judge somebody. Mm. So, Berlin, my thing I want to say to you is keep doing that thing to where as you look for something positive and then you, you just gradually, where does, where does, where does, if, 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 it, if it's, one thing, two things, three things, where you gradually get over each one. Whatever you're facing, whatever depression or whatever situation that have you feeling depressed, try to regain yourself or to just analyze, hey, what can I do? What can I do to get past this one thing? I'm not saying that it's going to be, it's going to be overnight. I'm not saying that you're going to get over everything that you're going through. But try to tackle just even if you can get over one thing, you try to always try to push, push your way. And sometimes we don't feel like pushing. We don't. A lot of times we don't feel like we just feel like, hey, look here. I've been depressed all my life. I just just where I'm at. Yeah, well, it is what it is. If that's what it is, I'll just deal with that. That's what I got to do. But keep, like you said, you look for the positive, And if, that, if, that's, if that's working for you, then you, you make sure, you make sure find your purpose and your truth what helps you get through situations. Robbie said, it's always drama, especially to work. Everybody watching you. <laughs> and this is an overall advice for the worst thing. So this is my advice to you, Abby. Sometimes, yes, work can be stressful, you know. And sometimes, yeah, people watch it. But, you know, like I, I, I can't tell nobody how they deal with stuff, how to deal with stuff, whatever. But I'm just saying, sometimes you just got to look at work like, hey, I'm just here for this amount of hours. After that, I don't see these people no more until tomorrow. Don't let, don't let, see, it's, it's, it's one thing to deal with uh, personal, emotional, and psychological trauma. You know? it's, it's one thing to deal with personal problems. When you start taking on the environment or the environment you're in, you start now when the environment becomes more problematic, that right there, you will basically, you, you will basically just bury yourself because we are, human, we, are, we are human beings, right? So if you already have in your mind, like we, we, we go through so much, you have in your mind, I'm sick of work. I tired of going there. I tired of people, this and that. So the more you keep going there, the more you're going to be stressed because we haven't reached that point to where as we saying, you know what, let me just have a nonchalant attitude. Not saying to be rude to anybody, but to just understand that, hey, I'm just here temporarily and it's, it's only to accomplish something. I'm just going to do what I came here to do. And at the end of the day, that's that. Fine. And People are going to watch you regardless. 
I mean, that's, that's how I feel. And I had to come to a place to where, speaking just on a personal, where I, where I had to say, you know what? If you do good, people are going to watch you. I'm not even talking about talking about you. I'm, I'm, if you do bad, people are going to watch you. I give people stuff to watch. Since you like to watch so much, that's just me. I'm not telling nobody to do anything. O'Neill says to write to her truth. But Abby said, child, you have the biggest small. Oh, okay. Child, you have the biggest smile on your face, making everybody laugh, and you're showing love and support to others. But behind closed doors and deep down, you tearing up. That's so true. And a lot of people in society have what you call painted smiles. We can go there, we can wake up in the day, we can brush our face, put on our smiles, put on our painted smile. And then we just, we, we just go out there and all that time we hurting inside. Chronic, emotional and psychological trauma. Like things just keep prolonging. And I, I, I could understand this because I've been there. You're doing everything you could do with this right and positive, making people smile, helping people, and shook inside. Your heart is just tearing open. Depressed, anxious, angry. Sometimes it can even lead to delusion, confusion. When he says, stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one a wise person once told me hey Trail, the best way to deal with drama at work is to recreate your environment we aren't there to make friends but rather at earning smile laugh observe and keep it moving facts we only have a job see a good friend of mine told me, right, when you come to understand people's position in your life or people's place in your life, you will be so much better emotionally. Because if I'm going to work or wherever I already have in my mind, this person is not my friend. They're an acquaintance or a coworker or whatever then nothing they do is going to affect me. And this is a great point. I'd like to read that again. A wise person once told me that the best way to deal with drama at work is to recreate your environment. I love that. Make the environment conducive to what you want it to be. We aren't there to make friends, but rather an earning. Smile, laugh, observe, and keep it moving. I love that. <sighs> Listen, emotional and psychological trauma is just, it's just, and, um, I want to give you guys like a few signs, um, a few signs of a person that is going through whether it's emotional or psychological trauma. And these signs sometimes are so evident and we, don't, we, we, we fail to pay attention to them. Even within ourselves, we think, that, we think that we are okay when we are not. Sometimes, listen, I have to put this, I, this point is on my screen, so I have to make sure I get this in there. Sometimes we as individuals are so emotionally and psychologically drained and we have issues emotionally and psychologically to a point to where as we can't even notice it ourselves like we going through these things and we go into situations and we 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 we, we, we just stress depress and so forth and we don't understand that we 
we have an issue. I forgot to mention that point. We can't see ourselves that, hey, this, this, this is what's happening. And we have the, we have basically two, uh, I don't wanna, anyway, let me just go through them. We have the cognitive signs, whereas constantly having nightmares, you constantly having um, flashbacks or visual of, of the event that you went to, loss of memory and concentration abilities, you're disoriented, you're confused, you're having mood swings, then you have the behavioral signs where you avoid activities or places that trigger memories of a certain event, social isolation and withdrawal. You don't want to be out with nobody. You don't want to be around anybody. Lack of interest in previous or enjoyable activities. You used to like reading. Now you don't want to read no more. You used to like going to the movies. Now you don't want to go to the movies no more. You are physical, easily startled, easily startled always fatigued or exhausted, edginess, insomnia, chronic muscle patterns, sexual dysfunction, you can't even function in bed. Listen, emotional and psychological trauma is serious people, changes, changes in sleeping and eating patterns. You used to sleep for eight hours, now you're sleeping for three. You used to eat one time, now you're eating no time. You used to eat 10 times, now you're eating 50 times. Vague complaints of headaches and pain throughout the body. Sometimes it could be extreme alertness. Always on the lookout for warnings or potential danger. And we have psychological, overwhelming fear, obsessive and compulsive behaviors, detachment from others, people and emotions, emotional numbing, like you're just, you're just there. You don't care, nothing. You don't feel anything. Somebody get, got shot in the front of you and you just don't feel nothing. Guilt, shame, emotional shock, disbelief, irritability, things always irritating you, this and that always bothering you. Jeez, boy, some of these sound so familiar. Anger, anxiety, panic attacks. These are all signs of emotional and psychological trauma. Woo. Listen to some of them. Some of them sound so familiar to me. You would be surprised that you, me, us, we, are emotionally and psychologically traumatized. Trell said, just to piggyback of what Abby said, it is our strongest warriors who are hurting. Fox. The most behind closed doors. Fox. Sometimes it has nothing to do with them personally, but it's because they are burdened with others' pain. And that right there is a serious one, you know. Sometimes we are so emotionally depressed because we've taken on the problem of others. Whew. You just open up something else right now. Can you imagine now? You emotionally and psychologically stressed out because you've taken on the pain of others. That's that boy, boy, Trell, you just touched something. When you're taking on listening and taking on so much problems, then you feel like you're so heavy, like you're hot, like now nah, you just a zombie. Yeah, boy, listen, that, listen, that sounds so familiar. You just hit home right there. Feeling other people's pain. Mm. That, that's real right there. 
you can actually be depressed based on someone else. Hmm. Hi, Lyric. Lyric says, I agree with you, Miss Woodside. I, Tejo, they sound, they, mm. we gonna talk, we gonna talk after the podcast. Lyric says, this is where we have to realize we are not superheroes and only assist when you truly can. Back. And I think this goes back to where O'Neill was saying, um, are they capable? Are they capable of helping you? Because some people, they want to help, but they genuinely can. And that's what destroys some, some people too. You want to help somebody so bad and you just can't. That, that, can, that can cause you to be emotionally damaged too. And that is a form of depression within itself. Gaia says, I ended up coming, ac- coming across an interview that Oprah did with a Caucasian lady who was molested Ooh, from the age of two throughout her childhood. As a result of that sexual and emotional trauma, she ended up having about 80 or 90 personalities as a coping mechanism. So true. And, and that, and, 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 that right there, that is a side effect of emotional and psychological trauma. Fuck. People, 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 they create, they create coping mechanisms to where they, they can now deal with what they're going through. So they basically create a new reality, so to speak. They create a new norm for them to try to take their mind or to alleviate the stress and tension that they are feeling. And this is happening right here. Cajun says, being a safe space for people requires you to have some as well, especially if there isn't much you can do. It's draining. It is draining. And that's why you have to sometimes equip yourself with the necessary tools to deal with situation, especially if you, if you feel like that's your calling, so to speak, or that's what you love to do. If you love to help people, equip yourself so that you can be there mentally for somebody and emotionally, because if you don't have it, you can basically end up in the same position or worse than the person that you are trying to help. Lyric says, I'm too. Saying yes to others and neglecting oneself can lead to depression. Fuck. So true. We so focus on making everybody else happy, but ourselves. And that can lead to chronic psychological and emotional trauma. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be kind to people, but some people, they bury themselves for others. They put others. I'm not saying that you should not love or care or any of that for anybody. I'm saying, love yourself too. Take some time out for you too. Some of us, we will do so much things for these people and neglect ourselves. We will buy them a Benz and buy us a Beetle and the Japanese one. We, 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 we would buy a gold, a gold, a 14 carat diamond, real diamond, two carat diamond ring, 14 carat gold, 
for a person and then buy ourselves gold plated with a cubic zirconium ring. Come on, man. We have to learn to love ourselves as individuals. You have to learn to love you. And that's another thing too. Some people don't even know how to love themselves. Trell said, yes, a person with multiple personalities. That's a coping mechanism. Now, anybody who knows me, like if you, if you knew me in my teen years, y'all know. I had a bunch of mixed multiple personalities. I was the joker. I was this one, that one. Listen, I can relate with that. Emotional and psychological trauma. And the thing that we as individuals struggle with right here in the Bahamas is chronic emotional and psychological trauma. It's prolonged and repeating. Every day we wake up, every day it's something else. I don't know if y'all had situations where every second something else happens. I remember when I had my first car, that car used to have me so, so, I don't want to say depressed, but it used to have me so angry. Listen, I thought that Honda was the best thing ever when, that, when, that, when I got that car. Then next thing you know, this happened, that happened, the car started shutting off and the road making me shame. I was like, Lord, you fixed that. The car started leaking oil. I was like, mother flip, you fixed it. Yeah. Listen, I had a situation with my little Honda where my car was leaking oil. I gave it to this mechanic to fix. The car was pouring oil. I gave it to him leaking. It came back pouring. It was like every day it was something with that car. I was so angry. I, I was depressed. I, I even said, you know, I was going to drive that car and just run it straight, straight into the water with me in that car. That's how angry I was with that car. That, that used to have me mentally dream. Daya says, replying to Abby, that is what you call smile and depression. Painted smile. When someone appears happy on the outside, but is depressed on the inside. And that's us. That's what we go through now. Listen. Trell said, self-love. This is a whole other topic on its own. Yes? Listen. You're always, you're, you're always coming here tapping into my other topics, man. <laughs> This is a whole other topic on its own because we cannot love thyself or take the time out to feed into our souls, uh, into our spiritual, emotional, and psychological needs. There is no possible we can offer assistance to anyone. So true. We neglect ourselves and want to help others. Listen. The strongest warriors, I would, let me don't say warriors, the strongest persons that I know, right? The majority of them, they're always helping people. And they have a good heart and they're always helping people and they always get the short end of the stick. That right there can trigger you off. Like I'm always doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm nice, I'm blessing people helping people out when they call me, I'm there, doing this and that for people. And my life still is, man, y'all know I don't curse, but y'all get the picture. It's like you're doing everything you're supposed to do or what you know you're supposed to do and everything is going crazy in your life. Like you don't know where to turn, who to talk to, man. And, and, and all you could do is just question everything. It's real, folks. All you can do is just question everything like, okay, I just blessed this one. I'm helping people. I'm there for people. If somebody do me wrong, I'm saying sorry. Like, you're the nice person. Like, you're the angel. And, and, and life is just so tough. And for those, for those of us that are spiritual, right? 
For those of us that are spiritual, we go in the church, we praying, we fasting, we be giving our offering, we doing the things we're supposed to do, trying our best to live righteous, trying our best to live for Christ. We just trying our best to do the things that we know what is right. And then things still aren't things like that. That'll mess you up emotionally and psychologically. You can listen. We have to keep it real, you know. We go through a lot of things, you know, like some people, some people are gems. Like they are real gems. Everybody have flaws, but listen, they are gems. Like they would give their all to anybody. And they love when they love, they really love. Can you imagine you, you being a real gem and life still messed up? That will drain you emotionally and psychologically. Charlie says, yep, so hi, Charlie, and welcome to the show. Dial, I'm being real enough. That's it. That car, if, 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 if nobody ever knew what it was to, to feel depression from a car, jeez, that car. Hmm. Listen, I just want to say, right? As individuals, we have to pay attention to the signs that people give off. And where we can help, we have to offer some sort of assistance, even if it's recommending somebody to talk to a therapist. And if you have the Christian faith, the real Christian faith now, not, not, not the wishy-washy faith that a lot of people show in all that judging and bull crap. If you have the Christian faith, Send up some prayers to somebody, man. Talk to them. You know what I mean? And even so, sometimes, I just want to say this, you know. Sometimes we don't have to wait till it gets so bad. Like, you, if you know, if you know, right, they're going through something right now. Don't wait until it's so excessive. That's when you want to take part in trying to find a way because it might be too late. We have to listen. We have to listen. And for those of you and for those of us that are in the Christian faith, we have to be more sensitive in the spirit of people because people actually talk to us through their body language. And you can feel certain vibes from certain people. And then if that person do open up to you, you have to be more understanding and sensitive to that person. Like some of us, especially in the Christian faith, we are so judgmental and we are so condemning. Like if, if a person isn't, isn't a Christian, right? Like they tell us something. Oh, you ain't supposed to make that decision. They, the decision was already made. Like, what are you, you going to condemn them for the vacant? No, now is the time to say, okay, decision has already been made. The situation is always here. What are we going to do now moving on to fix it? How can we address this? That should be the approach. And then, listen, I feel this pulling to me, you know. Those of you in the Christian faith, you got to stop being so fake and hypocritical. The Bible says love in spite of, and love covers a multitude of sin. All through the Bible is love, 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 love. But the minute someone tells you or opens up to you or reveals a, pro, a, a, a situation they're going through, and because it goes against what you believe in, now, keep in mind, it already happened. Now, all of a sudden, you're not offering help. You're offering condemnation and judgment. Come on, man. You have to understand how to be sensitive with people because people are human like we are people.
We have to learn how to understand one another. Yes, you might not be Christian. Yes, you might not believe what I believe. And yes, you might not be a part of a church or whatever, but that doesn't mean that I should judge or condemn you. That can push somebody over the bridge or push somebody over the wall or push somebody over the roof. Daya said, yes, Jason, we need to be more sensitive to each other's needs. Yes. And we ain't. We ain't sensitive at all. The minute you open up to somebody, it ain't that serious. Like I saw, I saw a post on Facebook, right? This person actually saying, oh, they, they ready to give up life. And, you know, I did not comment, you know, me personally, I, I come in your inbox because that's personal. Why do I need to post a comment for well, others to see? No, I'm going to direct my message. But I took the time because I was curious, right? I wanted to see how persons were going to respond. And one of the comments that stuck out to me is, you can't be serious. It ain't that serious. Well, what the heck is this? I I couldn't believe like listen. And I I I listen, I had to reach out to that person, you know. And they were actually bothered by the some of the comments that the people made. And we we often we hey, listen, we often especially us of this Christian faith, right? We, off, we often offend people based on their decisions. If somebody come to offend you, it's not your job to scorn them. They already made the choice. They already made it. Now how are we going to fix it? What are we going to do? How can I help you get through this? That's love. Trell says, so it's safe to say that being lost in the world without knowing your purpose can make you emotional. That's another thing, too. Not knowing your purpose. Now, nah, you, you, you all up in my other topics, man. Like, why am I here? That's often a question asked. Why am I here? What am I here for? I don't feel like I'm going anywhere. That you just touched something. You that's serious. Not knowing your purpose can make you emotionally traumatized. Fox. Sure. Daya says, yes, Jason, you are so correct. People do talk through body language. We must learn to discern each other. Yes. I'm wondering if it makes you spiritually traumatized or lost. It could be both. Keep in mind, not everybody is spiritual. And we have to learn how, even, as, even if you are in the Christian faith, you have to learn how to reach other people. I'm not saying to, to not believe in God. I'm not saying that to... I'm not telling you to put your salvation on hold for an individual. No, I'm saying we have to realize that we have to sometimes come down to a point where we can relate to an individual without trying to shove a whole Bible down their throat and make them choke. Yes, you believe in God and I understand that I believe in God too and I love God. If somebody don't believe in God, right? If somebody is an atheist and they don't believe in God, right? Are you not going to help them to whatever situation they, they're going through? If I decide I don't believe in God anymore, right? And I'm crying out for help. And you can see that I'm emotionally and psychologically drained. You're going to tell me God will make a way. Now, I'm not saying to not listen. I'm not saying to not hold on to your beliefs, you know. I'm never, ever going to tell anybody, but I'm just saying we have to understand that people 
aren't going to believe what we believe and we still should give them help. That's what I want to say. Just because a person doesn't believe in what we believe, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to help individuals that are going through emotional and psychological distress. Barry says, couldn't agree more. Also, a brother offended is harder to win than a stronger city with strong walls. Fox. Condemnation is never the answer. Then we wonder why people are avoiding to avoiding the church. We aren't supposed to be supposed to be advertisements of God. We are to be evidence of God. Fox. And I don't really want to, I don't really, I'm going to say it because it's on my mind. I don't want to say it. A lot of people that are going through an emotional or traumatic experience, the majority of individuals actually feel what they feel because of a church environment. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's fact. Church will make you emotionally and psychologically stress, depression, anxiety. You feel like you have to live up to a certain standard to fit in. All of that clicks. You're not in this clique. Or you don't do things the way they want you to do things. All of that right there is a form of emotional and psychological trauma. says be little and I've always disliked anyone who does it. Educate me, provide your factual evidence to persuade me. And that's what's wrong with our society. We be little before we help. I'm not saying everybody, but it's the norm. Like you like me personally, I try to look at things a certain way to understand. Like a few years back, like I've known this girl, right? The dudes used to be like, oh, she bad or whatever. And you know what I mean? Dudes always talking about her, right? She bad or whatever. So I chose to not call her bad because I don't know her situation or what was the reason she was going through or doing what she was doing. So I made it my purpose and I made it my job to reach out to her and we became cool. And it's like month after month, she started opening up, telling me how she's going through this and she's going through that, how she was molested and stuff like that. And and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't know why, what are these, why are these people acting the way they're acting? You don't know what they went through. I'm not saying that you sh this is your, should be your avenue, but people react to things differently. And when I got to know her, she's one of the best persons to this day that I know. She just went through so much and she said she don't know how to handle it. And she just started acting out of character just to get her mind off of things, like to, to try, keep the thrill up, to keep her mind racing. Like you don't know what people are going through. Kajo said, too caught up in religion than displaying the love and characteristics of God. Fact. Religion. They're just religious. They're not Christian. They know this is what they're supposed to do. We go to church, sing a hymn, we collect the offering, we preach, somebody fall out, we wiggle, somebody get pushed out, we speak the Honda, Mercedes, Mitsubishi, Volvo language. And then, no substance. That's the topic on the whole of itself. So true. That is why we are to go to our brothers who we have offended. Fox. Okay, Joe boy, you're touching something there. Or if they are gay, or poor, or broken. Do we turn our backs? Are they not worthy? Oh, Lord, listen. Mm. We're going to get into these subjects. The gray area, guys. The gray area. 
But Shondell said, oh, wow, she had racing thoughts. Exactly. She's going through so much things. She was molested. Listen, when I heard her story, like, I was literally broken. I was like, wow. And people just was using her, didn't respect her body or whatever. And I just got to know her. And Trev said, stop judging a book by its cover. So true. Listen, we have to we have to be more sensitive to people, man. And when I say sensitive, I mean sensitive, man. We have to understand. We have to understand that people aren't us. It's like we want folks or individuals to 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 basically respond to things like us. And that's not the case. Everybody won't, won't handle situations like us. <sighs> and guys, for those of you that basically want somebody to talk to, we actually have places here in the Bahamas that offer help. We have the National Hotline. And it can be accessed at any one of the two hotline numbers. You can call them 24 hours and somebody will answer. I tried this out, guys. I called them and they said, yes, if you want somebody to talk to where as you're going through something or you need help, whether it's a serious situation, whatever it is, you might be getting abused or whatever, and they offer help. If you're depressed and you just need somebody to talk, these numbers right here on the screen, folks, the national hotline. Three two 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 seven six three and four two 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 seven six three. Y'all can call them, and I've tested the numbers out. I, I, you know, I couldn't give you all the numbers if I hadn't checked it out. So, those are the numbers. If you don't feel like, you know, if you don't feel like you can trust anybody, and you rather talk to somebody over the phone, they're there to listen. You know, they deal with these kind, of, these kind of stuff, whatever trauma. If it's emotional, psychological, sexual, and so forth, you can call any one of these numbers. And like I said, it's 24 hours. Okay, let me get to this comment. Charles said, that's another topic. Discrimin mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, we going to get there. Daya says, Jason, I find that sometimes people are insensitive towards others because they are so in indulge with themselves. Fox. Fox. I think we need to be more open-minded to individuals that are going through or that are acting out because they are going through. Like, we don't know. Listen, I don't want anybody to think I'm coming on here and making an ex excuse for somebody's behavior. That's not what I'm doing or make an excuse for somebody acting crazy or just doing things to upset you or stuff. That's not what I'm doing. You know, all I'm saying is we have to be more sensitive and more understanding or realistic to the fact that some folks are acting out based on situations they are going through. You would be surprised what an individual is going through. And I just feel that we should be more open-minded to say, hey, uh, I see you acting a certain way, like what's wrong? You know, like we need to change our approach. We need to change how we deal with people that are, that are going through things. You know what I mean? It's, it's just that we have to find ways to address situation rather than either shutting the person down or being judgmental. And another thing too, you might not say anything to that individual, but your facial expression is another thing. You tell somebody this and they just, you know, they scrunch up, they, they, they start to scrunch up their face like, like they discuss that too can cause people 
to act out and be depressed because look, I told this person this and they look at me in disgust. Your facial, your facial expression and your body language speaks volume. Somebody's opening up to you about a, a situation or what they're going through and you like, Well, guys, like I always say, this is the gray area podcast where as we talk about situations or things that are hardly talked about for whatever, ever reason, for whatever reason. Oh, let me get to one of these comments. Jason, that comes with being sensitive and having skills to deal with people. Not everyone has that gift or skill. That's true, you know. But at the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily have to be a gift or a skill, you know. Because come on, sometimes, so, me sometimes, I don't, have the, I don't have the gift or skill sometimes. And I know not to say nothing. I, some, some people can talk to me and, and I could just not say anything. I could just not say anything. And they're okay with that. But some people... If you say, okay, I did this, I did that, right? And I feel bad about it. And then you tell that individual, oh, you were stupid for making that decision. Why would you do that? Like, come on, come on now. If we're being real here, sometimes it, it does not take a gift. Sometimes it's just, I don't want to say common sense because I don't believe sense is common. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to be real. A cup of brown eyes, you late. Sometimes people don't need you to speak. They just need a listening ear. But, like I said, sometimes people just want you to listen. And that's the truth. Sometimes the things that we say can trigger depression, anxiety. <laughs> that's why I said, I don't, that's why I don't like to use the term common sense. But anyway, guys, like I said, thank you for tuning in to the Great Area Podcast. This is a platform that I've created where as you can talk about situations or things that are rarely talked about for whatever reason. Thank you for my YouTube viewers on my Facebook views. Thank you guys for tuning in and you guys have been real supportive. Thank you guys that supported everything so far that I've did from sharing to my sharing my flyers, sharing the posts on uh WhatsApp, Facebook. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. And another thing is feel free to send me your gray area topics. If you have a topic that you feel that is a gray area that you want to discuss, we can chop it up. And also, we do have guests from time to time. If you want to be a guest also on the show, you can just hit me up and we can set that up. You guys, we are here every Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Y'all be late. 8 p.m. 8 p.m., not 9 p.m., 8 p.m. We are here at 8 p.m. So y'all can tune in. And also, if you have missed the video, you can find the videos on my YouTube page, The Gray Area Podcast. And you can also find it on the Facebook page, The Gray Area Podcast. And you can find it on my page directly, Jason Bill. If you have missed the video, like the people have been doing, they've been watching it afterwards because some people are actually busy. Y'all tune in tomorrow night. Listen, tomorrow night is going to be a real gray area topic. Tomorrow's night, tomorrow night's topic is the intentional transmitting of STD diseases. Y'all listen, that's a great area. We're going to talk about, talk about it and we're going to chop it up. So once again, thank you guys for tuning into the Gray Area Podcast with me, the one and only Jason, the emotional and psychological traumatic guy. <laughs> so y'all share, 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 share that team. And thank you, guys. See y'all tomorrow night, guys, 8 o'clock. Y'all don't want to miss that one. That one is going to be real great. So see y'all tomorrow. Peace.